cyber security. Now, it was interesting when we were doing our safety system designs in the 80s, there was no Windows, there was no TCP IP, there was no in Ethernet. Uh, we had to write our own protocols. I wrote several myself. And uh, those protocols were for us to transmit the data to our I.O. and our controllers. So what do we do when we had the fault find? Well, that was always a challenge. And what we ended up doing was putting in what were known as back doors. So I could go up to uh, some of our equipment that's running in automatic. I could plug into the RS-232 port on the front with a handheld RS-232 little ASCII keypad and I could put in a sequence of ASCII keys and it would take the controller out of automatic and allow me then to start looking at the serial registers to see what was being transmitted, to look at the I.O. memory to see what was in the I.O. and I would able to manipulate and do things. And when I had finished, I could then put through a series of ASCII keys, put it back into automatic. I can still remember those, those codes now, and I'm sure some of those systems are still out there and probably still have these back doors in. Because back then, we never thought anything, you know, who would try and get into a control system. And then when we get into the 90s, of course, the problem with every manufacturer doing their own thing meant that it was proprietary. So the poor old end user would have to go back to the manufacturer if, or the supplier of the system to be able to get anything changed. And of course, change orders meant money. And so the end users were fed up with this. So they wanted more open protocols, more open devices, in other words, devices that could talk to each other, and they wouldn't have to go back to the same manufacturer every single time. So come along Windows uh, in the mid-90s, and we, we did our, own, our first system in 96. So Windows would then came along, gave customers what they were looking for, more open platform, you could get devices. Now Ethernet was becoming much more the norm, we went through various iterations. Some of you are probably not old enough to remember MAP uh, and some of the protocols we had there, the, H -I -I, the H HP bus that we used to have, IEEE. So these then all went away and we ended up with Windows and TCP IP as being the primary. So along with that, of course, meant that now systems were more open. And of course, we all know how secure Windows is. Now with Windows 10, of course, they've, they've made it a lot more secure. So in the end, towards the end of the 90s, cybersecurity started being discussed. And the SP99 committee was set up to look at coming up with some standards for cybersecurity. And there were pre presentations at conferences and things like that. It was interesting, one of, my, uh, one of my guys went to a, a lecture a couple of years back and there was somebody from the uh, Department of Homeland Security and he put, a, put up a slide that showed what the current status was and he said to the audience, he said, well, so who feels this is the way it is? And, and basically what it was saying is that very few people were taking it seriously, there was been a lot of talk. Um, not much done about it. And most of the audience said, yeah, that's typically what it is. And he said, well, I put this up 10 years ago. So in 10 years, things hadn't really moved. And it was only when in 2007, eight that Stuxnet came along that people started to think about, ah, control systems are now vulnerable. And of course, Stuxnet, you can go onto the dark web and Stuxnet is is available as a blueprint for all the malware that's that's um, being produced to target control systems. Because like I said, control systems, if you can get hold of a control system, you can do all sorts of damage. And there have been instances where that's occurred, of course. So where we are today is that these various standards were all pulled together into one international standard 
called IEC 62443. So this is the cybersecurity standard for industrial automated control systems, IACS as it's known. If you look at 62443 and you're familiar with S99, you'll see that it does resemble an awful lot what's in S99. Plus there's some NIST and some WIB and other things in there. So it's a, it's a pretty well-rounded standard. The only difference is with the 62443 is that it has requirements for end users and OEMs in the same standard. Whereas when we look at the safety standard, IEC 61508 is, is specifically targeted for manufacturers and IEC 61511 is specifically targeted for end users. And end users would be engineering companies, system integrators and the final end user. So they were two distinct standards. Mm -hmm.